Welcome back. I am back with another review and some on feet and a little bit of comparison. So the pair I was lucky enough to get are Air Max One in the cool grey, neutral grey premium colorway. So I want to big up Air Patrick, who put me onto one of these trainers with a comment on one of my videos, and he was talking about a pair of Air Max One that I hadn't even heard of. Then I saw they were loaded up on a sneaker app. He got them on exclusive access in America, and I just loved the colorway straight away when he recommended them to me. So, so as always, just to start with the straightforward details, as I said already, this pair here is the Air Max One Premium, but they have a crepe sole. So if you just Google Air Max crepe, in the grey colourway these will come up and these released on Friday I think and they weren't in all stockists in the UK so they were in Hannon they haven't been a foot patrol yet which is surprising because usually foot patrol is in that tier of uh, boutique that gets these kinds of trainers but Hannon had them End had them like sneakers app had them and also sneakers and stuff and I was fortunate enough to get a win on sneakers and stuff <laughs> i can't i can't keep um i'm trying to get a little bit of perspective with my trainer buying and the idea of me winning the chance to get a pair of trainers is still a little bit ridiculous to me but anyway that's what happened i won a raffle on sneakers and stuff and got this pair and i was glad that i did so what are my thoughts and feelings on this pair i'll run through some of the details and uh, give you a closer look so you can make up your mind tell me what you think whether you agree with me or not as you can see behind me i have the nike air crepe hemps and for many people me included that was one of the best air max one releases of 2022 i'm not particularly into air max ones although i have having said that which is ridiculous i've managed to pick up about five or six pairs but i will be selling quite a few pairs because you know it takes a while for you to kind of make your mind up about a pair and then you can get rid of them um, sell them on give them to a friend whatever so what i'd like to do is talk you through some of the things that i really like about this pair and some of the things that are a little bit of a turn off so you can make your own mind up so the things that i really like about this pair are primarily it's a color and that sounds really ridiculous because they're gray and some people don't even class that really as a color but gray for me is is a fantastic kind of universal shade that you can wear with so many different things i like wearing gray tracksuit bottoms i like wearing gray tracksuits that's my kind of base line almost i like the way gray goes with white and pink and blue those are my some of my favorite color combinations and so when i saw an all gray dark kind of charcoaly pair of air max one i was really impressed and for me that is the main thing that i like about this trainer a second quality about this particular trainer that i think you would like is the quality of materials and if you watch reviews people are talking about how sumptuous the materials are how the suede's amazing it is a really nice thick suede around the toe box and around the main portion of the shoe and they are called premium so nike kind of acknowledges that it's used a better cut with um, the trainers the price is 153 pounds i think they i paid for them which is interesting because these have got beautiful suede on them and they are probably about 10 pounds cheaper than the crepe hemp pair that released last year but i guess that's to do with the kind of muslin hemp material that was used but these have a canvas toe box and canvas around the tongue and many parts of the trainer and um, it's not completely plush premium suede and one of the things i think to be wary of even though this is really good suede and you can see that it changes color when you move it is that there's nike premium and then there are other brand premiums and being a trainer head in general i mean loads of different brands i think is a good thing i always think it's a bit of a shame when people only buy nike or jordan brand because uh, i think you're missing out and my latest pickup and the most 
the pickup that I'm most excited about that I really love is from a couple years ago, I think this is. So I'm not sure, but I only got this recently because I was sleeping. These are the New Balance Stray Rat 911s. And when you buy New Balance made in England or made in the US, or if you buy a pair of Diodora, which are handmade in Italy, then you really do get to know about quality. Like this is standard. This kind of amazing suede is standard on a GR or a collab pair of New Balance 991. Yes, the price is premium too, but you can get these in the sale. You don't, they're about 200 pounds, but you can get them cheaper if you just hang on and if it's a colorway that isn't gonna sell out straight away. So the quality is good on these, um, but we shouldn't be really, I don't think, surprised when you get good quality on a 150 pound pair of trainers. The only other pair that I can use to compare in terms of Nike quality for this pair um, lots of people talk about how the quality on these is as good as the quality on the Ugly Duckling pair. I don't like the colourway on those and so I didn't buy them at all, but apparently the suede on those pairs is as good as these, if not better. So the suede quality combined with this colourway for me is a winner. And I think these are definitely, I've thrown them on feet straight away and I, I think maybe have a bit of a leaning towards like bright colours on first instinct but the reality is that actually you just want a pair you can pick up and throw on with a range of clothes and that's why these neutral colors aren't to be underestimated so for me as soon as i got this pair of trainers on foot i knew immediately i could wear it with loads of different um, clothes that i already have don't have to buy anything specific to go with this pair of trainers and for me i just want a simple life really i've got enough trainers as it is to make choices so just having a gray pair that i can throw on is a winner so for that reason, I would definitely recommend this pair. One of my only gripes with this pair is the overall shape of the trainer. The reason that I can say that is because I have this patter pair and the shape was one of the best things about this trainer. They really made it look sleek. It fits nicely, it's comfortable, and the toe box has got a lovely shape to it. You can see that it kind of just goes down there like that. Nice and angular, nice and sleek. This pair here is much bulkier and that's something that is not a particularly good draw for me. I, I find with these crepe um, midsoles that there's something chunky about this area here. Maybe it is exactly the same, I'm sure it is as this, but, but then when you combine that with the toe box, this one is significantly chunkier and kind of broader than this one here, which is sleeker. And that makes a difference. That was one of my favorite features of the Air Max 90 Recraft project, was they reshaped that silhouette because it had got out of control. It was bulky, they looked like moon boots, I've so gone off the Air Max 90, but when they recrafted it, I think in 2020 maybe, or 2019, they went back and made it look as it should do. And I think a little bit more consistency with Air Max 1s would be an excellent thing if Nike were to do that. But you know, it is what it is. It's not the biggest of deals, but that's one of the things that puts me off the shoe a little bit. On feet, really great trainer. I think this is a pair that will last, really wearable, goes with lots of different things. So for me, it's a keeper and something that if you're into Air Max 1s or you're into like grey trainers or you're just looking for something simple at the moment, this pair would be the one I would definitely recommend it. So let me know your thoughts and feelings. Do you feel like Air Max 1s are a little bit going to be played out? It feels like Nike rinses one model at a time and then moves on to another model. I was interested to see the Jordan 1 in the kind of elephant print um, just sat on the sneakers app and probably about 10 years ago, I don't know, five to 10 years ago, that would have never happened. You never would have seen a Jordan 1 sitting on the sneakers out, but they're in a full size run. I mean, for me, it's a disgusting colorway, but nevertheless, I know that Jordan 1s um, were a popular or are a popular silhouette. And it's just, I think everyone's a little bit worn out, to be honest, worn out with trainer buying. It can be long. I'm not one of those YouTubers who'll sit there and say, yeah, I've got, 500 pairs of trainers and I've got to go out and cop this pair or get this pair. I just think that's ridiculous. But I am definitely looking to slow it down, just have a few pairs that I love and get rid of the pairs that I don't wear and that maybe were more impulse buyers because I think the power of like Instagram and having these things constantly in your face is really powerful and you've got to be mindful of it. So thank you so much for watching. Are they a pair you would buy? Are they a pair you would let go? Are they an easy pass? Let me know what you think, put it down in the comments, always appreciated. Please like and subscribe if you haven't. If you enjoy my content, that would be great. Give it a thumbs up if you like the content and I will see you on the next one. Peace and love.